Hello, everyone. This is Al Fadi, and welcome again to the Let Us Reason uh, apologetic video series. And we're still, believe it or not, going through the Tawheed Dilemma uh, video series, basically, that uh, myself and Sam Shimon have been going uh, through a number of passages uh, from the Quran, and oftentimes we go back to the Bible to clarify why uh, such a, an astonishing acknowledgement in the Quran sometimes about the person of Christ becomes extremely important because, remember, the Bible preceded the Quran, and the Quran was merely reporting things, um, albeit without even thinking about the significance of those kind of in this case, titles given to Jesus. One of it is the Messiah. As always with me here in studio, uh, my dear brother Sam Shamon, uh, whom I Amen. am really honored to have you here, brother. I'm blessed to serve him with you. Amen. You uh, basically closed last time talking about uh, the title Messiah. We started it basically from the Quran, chapter 3, verse 45, That's but then right. we proceeded to go to Isaiah yeah. chapter 9. The reason why we did that is because the Quran doesn't define the term Messiah. So that left it up to the Jews and Christians to go back to their scriptures to define the term. Even though Jesus called Messiah 11 times in the Quran, it doesn't tell us what it means. So in Isaiah 9, we're told that the Messiah is not just a descendant of David, a human, physical <clears throat> descendant of David who sits on David's throne forever, because the only one who can sit on David's throne is a descendant of David. It calls him the mighty God, El Gibor, a title that belongs only to the true God. So the true God of heaven will be born as a child to rule on David's throne forever. There are other references in the Hebrew Bible that identify the Messiah as a divine person, an eternal divine person that becomes a flesh and blood human being in order to fulfill the promise given to King David. So he had to be a physical descendant of David. We're going to go to Daniel 7, 13 and 14, and we're going to see what our Lord Jesus does with these passages. Daniel 7, 13 and 14 is the next passage. And I'm going to write <clears throat> it down also on my slides yes. for people. Daniel so they can look at it. 7, 7 13 and 14. That's right. I saw... In the night visions, now by the way, Daniel prophesied nearly 600 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, and he did so in the power of the Holy Spirit. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, pay attention, one that resembled the Son of Man, meaning looked human, had a human appearance, came with the clouds of heaven, so he's riding the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days. Notice there are two figures. The Son of Man rides the clouds approaching the Ancient of Days. The New Testament will identify the Ancient of Days as God the Father. So the Son of Man is not the Ancient of Days, he approaches him. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him, the Son of Man, dominion, rulership, and glory, and the kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, or you can also render it as worship. His dominion, his rulership, his sovereignty, is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. So like Isaiah 9, this Son of Man figure is an eternal king with an eternal kingdom that can never be destroyed. And he's worshipped by people. By not just some, it says all people, nations, and languages. That means all the Muslim nations, all the Muslim peoples, the whole world must serve and worship this divine being who appears as a man, who rules over them forever. It's this is Daniel especially 7. Especially if you connect it to Book of Revelation, it becomes yes. even clearer who's being worshipped. Yeah, we know that's the Son of Man, Jesus. But I want you to see this is Old Testament, though. I don't want the Muslims saying, well, that's your New Testament scriptures. It's corrupted. It disagrees right. with the Old Testament. These are Old Testament prophets. But wait, I thought the Son of Man means that Jesus is just a human. Well, it is true. It means he's human, but it means he's more than human. He's God appearing in human flesh. That's right. That's what Daniel says. That's why it says one like the Son of Man, meaning although he's human, he's more than that. He's an eternal king who is fully divine, who is worthy of all worship because he rules forever. That's right. In order for him to rule forever, that means he lives forever. So like Isaiah 9, this being is fully divine. The child in Isaiah 9 who is born to rule on David's throne, the mighty God, this one rides the cloud, something that only God does, is worshipped by all nations and rules forever. Amen. Now, let's see what our Lord did with this prophecy, but I'm going to look at one more. Psalm 110, verse 1. We're in about a thousand years before our Lord Jesus' birth. Psalm 110, verse 1. This is a prophecy by King David inspired through him by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit revealed this to him. That's right. So a psalm of David, Yehovah, the Lord said unto my Lord, Ladoni, Yehovah, Neom, na, Yehovah, Ladoni. Jehovah said to my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I might make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, according to the Psalms, Jehovah sits enthroned in heaven. 
and I'll give the references. We won't look at it. That's right. Psalm 2, verse 4, Jehovah is enthroned in heaven. That's right. Psalm 11, verse 4, Jehovah's throne is in heaven. Psalm 103, 19, Jehovah's throne is in heaven from whence, from which he rules over the entire earth, the kingdoms of the earth. So these three Psalms, Psalm 2, 4, Psalm 11, 4, Psalm 103, 19 says that Jehovah's throne is in heaven and from that throne he rules over all creation, especially the earth. For David's Lord to sit at God's right hand, that means David's Lord is a co-occupant with Jehovah of the same heavenly throne. In other words, if Jehovah's on the throne in heaven and David's Lord is sitting with him at his right hand, that means David's Lord is sitting with Jehovah on the throne in heaven, but David's Lord can only sit on the throne of Jehovah if he too is Jehovah, one with Jehovah. In other words, this opens up the door That's to right. a divine plurality, a plurality of persons That's in right. The essence of Jehovah, right? That's, a, that's where the word ahad actually comes in handy. That's right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully we're going to impact that yeah. as well. So yeah. notice what these three prophecies say. Hmm. David's Lord is a divine person, a co-occupant of God's heavenly throne. <clears throat> the Son of Man that Daniel sees rides a cloud, something that only God does. He reigns forever and is worshipped by all nations, showing that he's truly divine. The child of Isaiah 9 who is born sits on David's throne. He's the mighty God. So three different prophecies by three different prophets, all of whom affirm that this one who sits on the throne, the Messiah, is not just a human being, flesh and blood human being That's born, right. but he's also God in the flesh, distinct from God, and reigns with God forever and ever. And not only that, brother, I mean, I'm sure you're going to probably touch on it. If we go to Psalm 1101, our Lord used this and to that's where prove... We're going, yes. His that's his divinity. divinity. That's why now I want to show you what Jesus and the New Testament writers do with these prophecies. So don't forget the Son of Man who rides the clouds. David's Lord is sits on God's right hand. And maybe we should stop right here <clears throat> because we want to pick it up in another session where we talk about how Jesus now unpacked all of this so that it becomes even clearer that Jesus used all of these fabulous passages that you have just referenced to reveal his divinity. Because we want our Muslim friends to see that Jesus himself did acknowledge his divinity. Because this is the, their argument, as you know, that Jesus never said that he is God, as if he has to say, I am God, worship me. That's right. Well, with that uh, in mind, uh, fasten your seat belts, because the next session is going to deal with how Jesus himself affirmed his deity and the fact that the title Messiah is a divine title. Thank you, and God bless. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ.